everyone, Reed Johnson here, and want to talk about T-spline modeling in Fusion 360. A great topic, T-splines are a lot of fun. I want to start off with this image here on the left. You can see this is a spline, and you might have used these before in uh, another CAD software or an illustration software. And splines are great. You set a series of points, and the software will generate a squiggly line uh, that follows through those points. Now T-Splines takes that to a new level where essentially you have a spline and it's defined by points on the spline. And that's a huge improvement. The spline on the far left, uh, it's only helpful at the beginning and end of the line. That's the only place you can grab that line and really uh, add to it. If you add points on the line, you can start to control it more specifically and then on the right, you can see we can add a spline to another spline and start to create a 3D cage of splines. So it's called T-spline uh, technology. And as a spline connects to a spline, it makes a T-shape, uh, which gives it that name. So here's a T-spline body modeled in Fusion 360. Uh, we can see it's a solid body here and it's comprised of points. See, so these are all points on a spline. And then it's composed of these splines uh, that connect to each point. And then finally, there are a series of faces in between all these points and lines. And the cool thing is we can manipulate each line just like a spline, like you're working in, uh, again, your illustration software or your uh, CAD with a spline, but you're actually generating a 3D shape. Uh, instead of just a 2D spline. And these are super useful, all sorts of ideas. Here's some models I've uh, worked on. Uh, so here's a quadcopter body using the T-splines to create a really smooth aerodynamic shape. Uh, here's a medical device that's a mixing syringe, so it combines two different materials. And using the T-splines for the handle and where I put my thumb to make those ergonomic. This is a concept rendering for maybe bracelet or jewelry. Uh, this is a bike frame using T-splines, uh, flashlight housing, and all sorts of housewares, furniture. Uh, I even modeled these flowers here using T-splines. So furniture can be modeled with T-splines, uh, all sorts. These, these are famous pieces, uh, uh, Eames chair and the Panton S chair, or, variations of those, and other furniture ideas and designs. These are modeled with T-splines and utilizing T-splines to the max to create smooth surfaces and also structures. Uh, jewelry, so all sorts of ideas for jewelry can be very organic. Uh, it's a helicopter and another version of a helicopter. And all sorts of shapes. It's you know, what you can imagine you can design using T-spline modeling. Uh, car bodies is another great use of T-spline modeling. So here's a go-kart body, and here's an actual car body uh, modeled in Fusion 360. And these are rendered in Fusion as well. All right, so I want to talk uh, a little bit inside of Fusion of how to do some of these things, uh, and the basic concepts behind creating a box, things to look out for, pitfalls to avoid while you're learning T-splines, uh, symmetry, how to add... Uh, complexity to a T-spline body, modifiers, faces, snapping and thickening. So let's jump into that and go to Fusion 360. Got that same list here, so we stay on target. Creating a box. I'm going to start off with the Create Form in Fusion 360 and create a box. And when I do this box, it's going to ask me to place this on a plane. And I can click uh, the ground plane, it'll be fine set the center of the box and pull away to set the boundary of the box. So pretty simple. Two clicks, I've got a box. I get some additional arrows I can use to modify the size. I can also add in some extra definition. Now in T-splines, it's a good idea to not go crazy with this. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of curvature with very few splines. And so I don't need to add any more than I need to get the curves I want. So I'm going to call that good right there. So what do I want to avoid? 
Uh, here's an example. If I right-click, I can edit this form, and I can grab uh, this point and drag it down, down, down. And at some point here, it's going to cross right there. And I've crossed the T-spline into itself. And if I said OK at this point and tried to finish this T-spline, it's going to give me an error and let me know that the T-spline body self-intersects. So essentially, we don't want to cross the lines across each other. We don't want to move a spline over another spline. We create a point of zero thickness there, and, and it's no longer a watertight body, and we cannot convert it to a solid body. So that's a, a big thing to watch out for uh, while you're learning, is to keep those lines in succession in order. So how do we do this in a way that keeps everything good. I'm going to add a little symmetry and then we'll have some fun. I'm going to undo that step. Back to this T-spline box. I'm going to add some symmetry. So one of the tools here in the T-spline area of fusion, the sculpt environment, is to add mirror. So I can do mirror internal and I can click on the left side and then click on the right side and that will put symmetry between the two sides. I can see there is a green symmetry line here and I'll say OK. And now I can right click and I can say Edit Form and I get what's called the Triad. I can click on Planes, here's the Triad, Points, or Lines. And whatever I click on with this Triad I can move with the different arrows and I have symmetry turned on so I can see what I do to the left, I do to the right. I can move in any direction if I use these white squares I can do a planar move. It locks to that plane, and I can move in that direction. Uh, this dot in the middle will scale universally. These thin lines will scale in certain planes and directions, x, y, x, y, z, etc. And out here on the farthest part of the triad, I have these rotate tools. So I can rotate planes in any direction. And as you can see, this is a ton of fun. You can model, and what you see is what you get. Um, but to keep those best practices, it can be uh, something to avoid is tangling that up. And, and how do I avoid the tangles? One thing it's good to note, that as I move these lines to, towards each other, the curves or the radius between the two gets tighter and tighter. I'm going to double click to grab a whole series of lines. So I double click, I get that whole ring of lines, and I drag this down, and I notice at some point, this is going to get a pretty sharp curve down here. Think of two tangent lines. I've got a straight line on the bottom, a vertical line here, and it's going to try to create a tangent curve between the two. The tighter those lines are together, the less space it has to make the tangent curve, and I get that tighter radius. Eventually, if I pull this down, I'm going to start to reverse that curve uh, to get those tangents. And if I keep going, eventually I'll cross the lines and, and, and cause some problems. So I want to think about how I do that. So a couple of ways to add some definition without crossing the lines. I might come back to my uh, modifier. So we're talking about adding modifiers now. Modify. And I can do something called insert an edge. I have all these edges selected, so it's going to select a whole ring. Maybe want to add some definition down here. This insert location, you can think of it as a percentage. It's right now 34% between this line and this line. If I did 5.5, that's you know 50%. And it's based on curvature, so uh, it won't be a dimension, uh, but halfway between the two. So I'll say OK. And now I've got an extra line in here uh, between the first and the second. And that's going to give me a really tight radius uh, right there. So I wanted to do that. Instead of moving this line down until I cause problems, I can simply add an edge. The cool thing about T-splines is you can also remove edges, and they don't have to be continuous, like you might be used to modeling in, in NURBS. I can take this part of the line only and delete that, and it's gone. And I can continue to do that, delete, and change my model uh, not have so many lines where I don't want them and don't need them. So, fun way to model here. So what if I want to add some material? So let's add uh, some material here. 
And one way to do that, we talked about you know adding lines, adding edges. I can also click on these faces. I can right click and say edit form. And a little hot key is to hold the Alt key on my keyboard, Alt, and move, and that's going to add material. And I can add that in any direction while I hold that Alt key. So now I'm adding this material. I could bring these up and maybe I could do a bridge and bring them together. Uh, so I can start to add material uh, that way as well. All right, so I'm going to turn off this body here. And I want to add some faces. So we talked about creating a box. Uh, we can go ahead and just create faces. That's an option as well. So I'm going to create a face. Click on the ground plane. Click on the center if I'd like. Center. If I hold the center and drag, it's going to do these little blue lines uh, to keep that oriented together. And there's one face. I click the four sides, a four-sided simple mode here. And I've got a four-sided face. I can continue this trajectory out. I can add additional faces and model whatever shape I'd like. Now, if I want to, there's a symmetry here. I can say mirror duplicate. Click on this, uh, these faces. Click on this mirror plane. And now these are going to act on the same side. This might be a method to start modeling a car body. So I can right click and I can say edit form. And that same add material, where I hold Alt on my keyboard while moving, I can start to add material here. Might have to come back and weld some vertices here if I need to. Uh, but I can start to model and sculpt uh, by holding Alt and moving and start to make that car body how I'd like this to be. So you can see the front wheel well there. I can grab some additional surfaces or lines, hold the Alt, and start to model that car body. So that's pretty cool, a uh, pretty quick way of starting to model uh, anything you imagine. A little bit farther. Then of course I go back in and uh, do some additional modification to get this to be what I'd like it to be. And something like that. I'm going to, on purpose, not touch these all the way together. Because the last command I can do, I can say modify. And I can weld vertices. And I can now pick you know, two vertices at a time and start to weld these together and get back that symmetry line lets me know that I've got a symmetrical model. Right here in the front, that one's welded, and then this guy here. And there I go, I've got the start of a car body, car design in Fusion 360. Uh, now a couple other modifiers I might want to look at would be to thicken this. If I say modify, thicken, I can add some thickness and now this will be a solid body. I can zoom in, I can see, oh, there's a thickness now to that to that T-spline. T-spline shape. Great. So that's fun. Now we want to look at some snapping. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this form. And I've got this car body, I've got this other shape. I want to do snapping. And we talked about thickening, so this is the last thing we want to look at here. I'm going to turn on this other body. Let's assume I've modeled something else, or I've brought in some reality capture, have some other data. Maybe I'm modeling a product that's for another product, and I want to model to that. I can do that with T-splines as well. So here is this you know, original part. And I might come in here and create a form again. And using this existing model, I can create faces. And the trick here is you know, it's asking for a, f a plane to model on. And I can do that like we did with the car body, or I can check object snap and now I'll notice this little blue black dot it's snapping to the existing model and it will do this for a mesh like a reality capture you could you know capture a hand and model onto that or you know this is a parametric model I can model and so I can start to snap and create faces right on top of that existing model so maybe I want to model something new that fits right inside of this part 
uh, but it's a very organic shape using these T splines. And I'll say OK. That's going to wrap that up into a nice curvy T spline. You can see it's following that curvature. Now it's following at the points where I click, so it's an uh, approximation of, of following it, but it's really good. I'm going to go ahead and go modify and thicken. Add to that. I can do sharp or soft edges as I'd like. I'll say OK here and finish the form. And now I've added, enhanced this original product uh, with my additional design here uh, using that T-spline environment. Uh, so thanks for joining. It's been good and hope you've had fun learning a little bit about T-splines and looking forward to using those and generating some really cool designs in Fusion 360. Thanks.